All right, welcome. Uh, this is going to be the Triple O project update. I'm um, going to cover what we did in Stein and uh, what we're looking to do in Train a little bit as well. My name is James Slagle. This is Emilia and Mikey. Uh, we're both uh, members of the Triple O project. Um, we work at Red Hat. There we are. Um, so, <laughs> um, just in case, if you're not familiar with what Triple O is, uh, it's an OpenStack deployment tool. Uh, we actually use OpenStack itself as the deployment tool, um, since OpenStack is actually pretty good at deploying infrastructure. Um, so, we use the OpenStack projects. Heat, ironic, the full list is there um, to deploy a uh, full over cloud, which is your tenant facing cloud where you would run your workloads. Um, we have support for most of all of the official OpenStack projects. Um, so uh, support for the different drivers and backends and whatnot. And then down here in the right corner uh, is uh, a brief sample of the, the tools we use to actually do the deployment. Um, so we heavily rely on Ansible and Puppet uh, as well as Heat for the software configuration side, and then uh, Ironic for the bare metal provisioning steps. So one of the things we really try to fo focus on is giving you a flexible way to do your deployment. Uh, so we really focus on the, the planning stage itself um, to kind of let you uh, customize and give you a flexible way to, to define what services and roles you want to deploy. Uh, in your overcloud. The actual deployment itself has uh, several stages uh, with pre-flight checks and validations as well. Um, and we also focus on day two operations uh, for things like major upgrades, uh, updates, and scaling operations as well. Um, you might remember that in the Queen's release, we also uh, added the ability f with what we called fast forward upgrades to be able to upgrade from Newton straight to Queens. Um, and so that will be um, available uh, not in Stein, but in Train. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to go from Queens to Train. All right, so getting on to the work that we did in the Stein release, um, a lot of the effort was kind of around getting our code Python 3 ready. Um, so this is the first release where we've added CI jobs for Python 3. Um, so all of our code is t tested now. Um, we've also added CI jobs that run on top of Fedora 28, um, and we're going to be still supporting CentOS as well once CentOS 8 is available with Python 3. So this is a big change in the overcloud. Um, the default network driver, um, which used to be ML2 OVS, is now replaced with OVN. Um, so this is just on the Overcloud itself, um, OVN gives you a little more scalability, um, as well as uh, it does not rely on the Neutron L3 agents. Uh, it actually uses a distributed d database model. Um, so the compute nodes are, um, have the OVN services running there instead of uh, Neutron services. So this is something to, to watch out for. <coughs> ML2 OVS will still be supported. That replacing there is just means that it's uh, we, we've changed the default. All right, so we also did a fair amount of work um, to enable edge computing um, during the Stein cycle, and particularly to help with scaling and, and uh, manageability as well. We've added the ability uh, to separate your overcloud deployment into multiple stacks. This allows you to uh, manage the different stacks uh, separately so that when you do one update, uh, you don't have to update all the nodes at the same time. Um, I've also added the ability to configure and create availability zones per edge site during the deployment itself. So previously this was some Manual steps you had to do after the deployment was done. Uh, you can actually do that as part of the deployment now. And additionally, at each edge site, uh, you can deploy a separate Ceph cluster, uh, which will be unique to that edge site as well. Uh, so previously, when you deployed in just a single stack, um, we could only create and configure one Ceph cluster. Now that uh, we're deploying with multiple stacks, 
you're able to deploy multiple Ceph clusters um, with one per site. Also at each site, uh, we have the Cinder Volume service as well, which is now running Active Active, and that's managed with etcd. So this is uh, not really a demo, more just like a screenshot. If you are familiar with the OpenStack stack list output, uh, you might you would typically just see one stack there called OverCloud. In this example, um, this is what you would see if you deployed four separate stacks, where you had one stack for your control plane um, with no compute services, a separate stack with compute services and possibly persistent storage at the central site, and then two DCN sites as well, DCN one and two. So that's kind of what the multiple stacks looks like. Um, this is the output of um, bare metal node list from Ironic, so we're still managing all the nodes together. Uh, the actual separation of the deployment is at the heat layer um, in the actual stacks. But these are all the nodes that were used in that deployment. Um, to help with the deployment of DCN, uh, we've also added support for spinal leaf provisioning. This allows you to provision bare metal uh, over a WAN or L3 routed network. You use a DHC relay to actually forward the DHCP requests across the network um, in this configuration. And uh, there are also some, we've, we've also tested this deployment with latency as well. Uh, and it also uses the ironic direct deploy interface instead of using iSCSI. Um, so the testing we've done on this is with 100 milliseconds round trip latency. Yeah, so as I mentioned previously for this Ceph stuff, uh, we've added support for this on the edge. Um, some of the other features are um, the Blue Store support uh, as well as moving to the Nautilus release of Ceph. So there are several changes uh, in the container landscape. Um, for how we deploy the overcloud and what container tools we use there. Um, probably the biggest one is that the container runtime we were using previously, which was Docker, is now deprecated in favor of Podman. Um, Podman integrates a little bit nicer with Kubernetes, um, and there's no uh, daemon running for, for Podman, so we're actually using systemd to manage all of our containers. Um, so you'll see some additional systemd services. They'll be named triple O service name. And those are actually are what are responsible for starting the containers, making sure that they come up on reboot as well, and as well as for uh, executing the health checks against the containers. Likewise, we're using Builda for the images CLI. Um, it's one of the tools that goes along with Podman. Um, and to replace the Docker registry on the undercloud, we ha now have a lightweight Apache server. Um, so it has a similar API as what was offered by Docker re registry, um, but it's just a, a web server there as well that will allow you to pull images. Anything else you want to add about that? Or? It's all good. All good, all right. Um, the routed network support, this is uh, kind of goes hand in hand with the, the spine and leaf support as well. Um, but again, the, the spine and leaf support is not specific to edge. So if you have a spine and leaf network layout in just one data center, um, you can still use routed networks to, to do your deployment. Um, and again, the, the connectivity between the L2 domain is, is done by routers. And for the Pixie pr provisioning step, um, we use DHC relay to forward the requests across the L2 domains. All right, so a couple of smaller things. Um, Crony is the default time service in uh, CentOS 8. Um, so that will replace NTP. And Ironic Inspector, we've also added support for that on the overcloud. Um, so in a previous release, we had support for bare metal to tenant with Ironic on the overcloud. 
um, but no support for inspector, so we've added that. Also have the ability to configure Nova cells with cells V2. <coughs> Excuse me. And the triple O UI is deprecated in the Stein release, so <coughs> something to keep in mind. <coughs> so this is what we're focusing on in train. So we're building out the validation framework. Uh, this will give you a new way to run custom va validations during the de deployment, as well as a framework for running in-flight validations during the deployment so that you can... Um... <coughs> no, I'm fine. Oh, thank you. It's fresh. <laughs> The, the in-flight validations will allow you to run a validation in between the steps of the actual deployment itself so that, you know, during step one when the database comes up, we'll be able to do a, a validation that everything is con configured correctly at that stage before moving on to the further steps in the deployment. We're also looking at uh, increasing scale by reducing the undercloud footprint. Um, so we'll be looking at <coughs> minimizing our services, um, kind of by really taking a look at what services we actually need to do the deployment itself. Um, so this kind of goes hand in hand with uh, deprecating the UI in the Stein release. Um, we'll be able to look at getting rid of Mistral and Zakar as well and minimizing our usage on heat and f focusing a bit more, or more on tools like Ansible for actually doing the deployment. Anything else there? Or? No. All good. All right, so we've also been working with the OpenStack Ansible team on a collaboration around a Tempest role. So this is just um, kind of reducing some of the, the work that both project teams were doing for main, uh, maintaining their Tempest configurations and being able to, excuse me, share that work across the projects. What is the Zool reproducer? Yeah, that's the thing that the CI team has been working on so you can reproduce what's being tested upstream on your laptop from any kind of cloud. So it's very useful and reusing what uh, the OpenStack Infra has been doing. So, yeah, so how you can contribute, how you can learn. Uh, we have the mailing list, of course, and you can send uh, any kind of question or feedback about the project in general. We also have IRC, uh, the triple O channel. And uh, if you're staying longer this week, we have the PTG tomorrow. And we have two days and a half full of sessions. Uh, we'll be very busy and talking about the things that we, that James just mentioned about the roadmap. So feel free to join us. Um, and uh, yeah, feel free to take a look at the doc. If something is missing, you can come reach us and we can talk later. Yeah, and I'll also mention there is a session this afternoon at 3.40 on some of the scaling topics that I mentioned earlier, um, how that relates to Edge, and kind of making a lightweight undercloud as well to kind of help with the scaling and management. So that's at 3.40 this afternoon as part of the uh, forum. So we have about five minutes left, six minutes for any questions or feedback. Yes. So migrating to OVN, <coughs> migrating to OVN in the overcloud, will be the, will there be a migration path with Triple O? Yes, yeah, there is. Um, so all of the, uh, there's a migration tool which will actually migrate your networks and as well as um, if there are any changes to the NIC config, templates as well. Uh, there'll be a migration for those. So, yeah. On the, uh, the cell support, I'm assuming the workflow would be something like you have to go to so set up one cluster in the data center. I want to make a second one as a cell. I have to manually go over there, install the DHC relay on some node, and then the rest is going to be used to 
boot the rest of the cluster and then I can create that as a second cell on an existing cluster. Is that the workflow? So the cells V2 support is in the over cloud. That's not used in the under cloud. Yeah, so the, and the, the DHC relay is just for Enrolling the undercloud nodes. Provisioning, right, yeah. So that, that doesn't come into. Right, but if I make, but I then want to make that second cluster as a cell for my existing overcloud, mm -hmm. that the, the nodes be, would be registered by a DHC relay, yes. and then I just do everything that way manually. So now I can support like multiple small clusters yes. within, with a single keystone for all of them as far as the uh, authorization structure. Yeah. Because all the other ones, you have, the the one that you showed where you had the four stacks, those are like four distinct keystones, right? So those four No, distinct. those are not four distinct oh. keystones, no. No, there's only one keystone there running in the control plane stack. Yeah. Okay, so all keystone traffic has to go back to the control plane stack then yes. for, okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, suppose that we have an existing OpenStack installation, uh, for example, in Mitaka release. Uh, can we embed triple O solution to this existing OpenStack solution and upgrade this OpenStack to a higher release? Is it possible? Um, is it possible? Um, it may be possible. It's not something anyone's done that I'm aware of or it's not something that we have um, documented steps on how you would do it. Um, there are things that have been done in the past, like deploy a whole new cloud and then do a live migration of the workloads to the new cloud. So I would probably recommend looking at a route like that as opposed to using triple O to try to like adopt an existing deployment. There should be a fresh install, yeah, installation on, on of OpenStack yeah. and migration from the existing installation yeah. to the yeah, new. You would have to do some configuration to actually migrate the workloads. Oh, yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Assuming you didn't deploy the atomic cloud. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, and I, I, I wasn't talking about, so I, I may have said live migration. I, I, I didn't mean live migration across the clouds like through Nova. It would have to be like a manual migration process. Just a quick clarification, the uh, spine and leaf slide that you showed had the um, composable roles and composable networks for all of the, all of the leaf nodes. Um, but then you did later on mention the fact that we could now do routed over cloud networks. So is there any reason that you would actually need those composable roles and networks there? Because I honestly think we can get rid of them. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure about that, honestly. Okay, so yeah. you just recycled the graphic, most yeah. likely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anything else? All right, well, yeah, feel free to uh, connect with us after the session or anytime this week. Thanks a lot.